But with no further ado, I'd like to introduce our speakers today. Our moderator for this session is Glenn Sumi. So nice to see you again, Glenn. Glenn is the associate entertainment editor at Now Magazine, where he's written about film, theater, and comedy since the late 1990s. A member of the Toronto Film Critics Association, he's written about and discussed the arts for a variety of outlets, and for three years was a weekly pop culture commentator on CTV News Weekend. Joining us as well is the director of Funny Boy, Deepa Mehta. Well, what can I say, Deepa? Deepa Mehta is an Oscar-nominated filmmaker whose work is celebrated on an international scale. Her emotionally resonating award-winning films have played every major film festival and have been sold and distributed around the globe. Her films include the elemental trilogy, Earth, Fire, Water, the final of which received an Oscar nomination for best foreign language film, Bollywood, Hollywood, Heaven on Earth, and the epic adaptation of Midnight's Children, Salman Rushdie's three-time Booker Prize winning novel. Her work challenges traditions and stereotypes and is always daring, fearless, and provocative. It's the spirit that saturated her feature film, Anatomy of Violence. Deepa recently shot the pilot and second episode for the Netflix original series, Layla, and is the creative executive producer for the show. She also directed The Manager, the pilot episode of Little America for Apple TV. And her latest feature, Funny Boy, is based on the award-winning novel, by Shyam Salvadori, with director of photography, Doug Koch, editor, Teresa Font, and music composer, Howard Shore. And that's it for me. I'm gonna pass it off to you, Glenn, to get started. Thank to, thanks to you both and have a great conversation. Thank you. Thank you, Louis. Uh, Hi, thanks. Deepa. Hey, Deepa, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. I wish the pandemic was over. I wish I could go shopping. I wish I, could see, I wish I could go and see a movie in a real movie hall. Uh, absolutely. That's one of the questions I, I want to talk to you about. But apparently, we have a trailer from Funny Boy. So um, I think um, you're going to be seeing that right now. Or an alum and a husband to carry the solar in a Kamudiate. Nan Tamil say, admire Pandaran. A joyful secret. What's wrong with you? majority complex. We don't want you here anymore. Just like your landlady. Uh, Just like your landlady. Killing people, innocent people. Isn't that what you call collateral damage? Collateral damage back to the city of Engel to easy. The Panamungla Kapatan. I love you, RJ. I just can't. Hey, my family. Women and children were butchered. Because we are dead. It is terrible, Amma. What happened to you? On the And you are different. The different is wonderful. Ooh, wow, what a beautiful, what a beautiful trailer. It brought the whole film back. I can't wait to see it on a big screen as we were talking about. Me too, Glenn. <laughs> I haven't seen it on a big screen as yet. You know, it'd be wonderful. 
Um, anyhow, I, I spent much of the winter watching roughly 75 Canadian movies, and uh, it was a great way to, to pass the pandemic. Um, and then to discuss the films um, with uh, a group of film industry people, you know, for for a day it was just was just one of the highlights of the pandemic and, and one of the most beautiful films that we saw and we talked was your film. So thank you for that. And uh, and what an honor to talk to you. Congratulations. Nine nominations. Thank you, Glenn. I mean, it's uh, it's wonderful to be able to do this, you know, uh, like you were saying during the pandemic, it's, it's such an opportunity in many ways when I'm trying to be positive about the pandemic, which isn't very often, but definitely it is a way of getting, focusing on what this country does really well and mm -hmm. has started to do with much more muscle is to make our voices heard. It's quite wonderful. Um, the film's been nominated for nine uh, Canadian Screen Awards. You've had such a, an illustrious and long career. Oscar nomination, Genies, um, awards all over the map. Um, I mean, is it still exciting to be recognized uh, like this by, by the industry? Um, I, I don't know if it's, uh, how does it feel? It feels, uh, uh, I feel almost um, embarrassed. I mean, if that makes any sense. I mean, I just feel okay. I mean, there's so many wonderful young filmmakers around and we should be focusing on them. And then I say, why not? I also deserve it, so I mean, <laughs> yeah. so I'm I'm sort of weird about it, you know. Absolutely. Um. So take me back. Apparently, you were working on uh on an adaptation of Funny Boy two decades ago, twenty years ago. What uh, happened no, to that? No, no, I wasn't. Uh, oh. I read I, I read the book when it came out okay. about twenty five years ago, and yeah. I really liked it. And mm -hmm. uh, and. You know, I was new to Canada in many ways, and there was something about the resonance of what happens to people who migrate. And I mean, I still feel like an immigrant in, in many ways. Uh, and uh, it, it resonated with me because there's something about the novel, which is so beautiful, which is about self-determination. Mm -hmm. And it's a great humanitarian ode that Sham has written to, uh, uh, because he doesn't think of it, as, he thinks of it as a Sri Lankan novel, which I loved. Uh, and not a Tamil novel. And for him, it's about building bridges within that community. His his mother is, Sin is uh, Sinhalese and his father is Tamil. Mm -hmm. And I've just done a film called Earth, which was about a sectarian war about Muslims and Hindus. And so this kind of division that happens, and Rwanda was happening at that time, I really, so I loved the idea of the book and I immediately called out. And of course, the rights had long gone to a British director and, so, you know, off and on I've met Sham and I liked him. And then when this came along, when he sent me the script after 25 years, I was not expecting it at all. And it was at the right time in my life. And I just, I was so moved then by the fact that, that after 25 years, and I asked Sham, I said, Sham, what happened? What, what have you been doing? What made you want to write a script? And he said, because I never liked the, once that I that that you know that people had done so and he wanted it to go to a Sri Lankan and a Tamil director and nothing mm -hmm. would happen so he did it on his own mm -hmm. you have to you have to really admire the kuspa and the belief that he had in the novel that he did it and I was touched by that yeah I talked to him a couple of weeks ago uh and he was saying he he studied the Sid Field screenplay books he he, <laughs> he studied how to put together a classic you know three-act structure movie <laughs> um and he also like at one point he said that he he had a certain ownership a guardianship I think he said about the novel because by that point you know it it had reached different generations, it was being taught in schools, and he didn't want a bad movie out there. And so he <laughs> said, uh, he said, um, why don't I do it myself? And so he write, writes his first screenplay, sends it to an agent, and I think the agent says, who do you want to direct this film? And your name is at the top of the list. So how did that feel? Uh, I, I felt um, I was really moved and touched. And, uh, and also, uh, for many reasons, it just felt like the right time had come. And mm -hmm. because in the meanwhile, I'd actually shot two films in Sri Lanka. 
So I knew Sri mm. Lanka really well, mm. Mm. and uh, that that helped. And it uh, and you know uh, it just felt like the right time. And I was I was I was delighted that he thought of me, and uh, you know. But, uh, now you've got a co-writing uh, credit on this. What was your cont contribution to to the script? Because apparently, I think in that first draft, he was telling me that he had cut out the the younger RG scenes or something. And and apparently, you told him that you wanted more of the book, which um, you know we often don't hear. We we often hear directors wanting less of the book and just to, to do something smaller. Um, uh, you know, uh, yeah, that's. Partly true. Uh, anyway, I mean it's his truth, but and it's uh, and I think he's being very generous. Uh, but uh, uh, you know, I remember laughing at, at at when I read the screenplay because I thought it was delightful, but at, yeah. not at all cinematic. Uh, and it felt and it felt like uh, you know the way it was. It felt like a a Sid Field screenplay <laughs> of a wonderful book. Of uh, course, I hope he's not. Is he still alive? I don't know. Whatever. Uh, and uh, uh, then. Uh, and also, it was like, what? A, it was really long. It was about 150 pages, and I said, you know, that's a very long film, you know. And uh, and then I felt that because, and he's so generous and he was so sweet. He said, "What would you like to do it?" I said, "I'd I'd like to rewrite it and make, write it with you together." And he was so open to that because, you know. And also, I really did love the little RG in the book. Mm. Mm -hmm. And I missed him so much that he wasn't yeah. there, and yeah. there was much more of a love story between the uh, the mother and the uh, and the Tamil tiger, mm -hmm. uh, which you know I thought it'd be really nice to make her much stronger, and not be not uh, that her reason for her commitment to the Tamil movement for independence should not come from because she was in love with the Tamil tiger, but because mm -hmm. she felt that so. You know, that, that's the feminist in me. And luckily, Sham said, go for it. So that, <laughs> that's what we did. Yeah. Um, was it difficult uh, as a director to juggle both that, uh, the personal story, because, you know, in some ways, this is a coming of age story, a coming out story, mm -hmm. and the political situation, which is, you know, very complex. And um, mm -hmm. was it hard to juggle both of those on screen? I, you know, uh, Glenn, no, it wasn't, in fact, because I, for me, I, I, you know, when I put away, I, when I finished with the screenplay and, and what, I, I put it away and I, and I put my director's hat on about a month later. So mm. then I start seeing that what, what, you know, Sham did and what I did and what, what both of us did together as quite differently. And uh, for me, it was, ne then that's when I thought it's not a problem at all, because the film had by that point the, the screenplay had become about uh but the story of importance of self-determination and self-determination whether it's sexual or whether it's cultural or whether it's racial is about humanitarian movements and it one led to the other very naturally from you know bunuel said this when your particular is the very minute you become universal and the particular story of R.G. becoming his own and embracing what was his became the political story of the Tamils wanting what was theirs. Um, you direct children so well in this film, um, uh, Arush uh, in Water, in Midnight's Children. Um, is there a key to approaching how to get good performances out of, out of young actors? Uh, I was, um, I think there is, I mean, I was greatly influenced by the master, I think, of uh, of the way, uh, a master filmmaker, Satyajit Ray. I, I was really lucky to spend some time with him uh, when he was shooting, in fact, his last film, Kharbare, in wow. Kolkata. So, uh, and I, I've been always, since seeing Pathar Ponchali, I've been always in awe the way he gets amazing, got amazing performances mm -hmm. from children. So I asked him that and he laughed. And he said, you know, it's, uh, uh, you know, something to the effect of it's not a big deal, but all you have to do is talk to the kids, to your young actors and talk to them as if you're their friend and find out from them what they like, what they don't like, what irritates them, what makes them sad. So, um, and I said, what do you mean? And he said, well, I asked my actor, uh, 
my young actor, who's his best actress? Or what, is, what, is, what game does he like? Does he like football or does he like cricket? And he said, when the moment came, I wanted him to be happy. I'd say, think that you won this big game of cricket. <laughs> you know, and, and the kid would just, you know, smile away wildly. So it, be, it becomes about, about caring for the children in, and getting to know them in a, in a very sort of normal way. And that's the way I always have been working with kids, is just to tell them, you know, ask them, okay what spend time with them find them what makes the tick and what doesn't and uh, and then use that i mean i'd never say this is your motivation i mean you know come on kids are not going to do that but but they relate to a moment you know they relate to games they relate to winning they relate to being pissed off with their parents well, it's easy uh, it's I'm not rocket science it's not it's not rocket science yeah. I'm curious uh, whose decision it was to have um, the older RG sit in for the younger RG and vice versa later on in, in key moments. I mean, it's a, it's a bold choice, especially early on when we haven't met the, you know, the adolescent RG yet and he's there um, in a scene. Uh, it, this came about uh, on set, I mean, completely. Wow. It, uh, yeah, and it, I mean, I hate flashbacks. And yeah. I, and you know, and I thought I'd just do away with that immediately, and just uh, and also trust the audience. I mean, there's uh, you know you have to respect and trust mm -hmm. the audience. If I got it, I hope that they would get it too. Mm -hmm. And uh, and also, I mean, there was a philosophy behind it for me. I felt that uh, you know what we are as children makes us what we are as adults, and what we are as adults comes from what is what is done to us as children or what what we're exposed to as children so to mm -hmm. marry both of them immediately and just really get to it and then and then leave just felt that the, it was the right creative choice at that point mm -hmm. that's beautiful um i'd like to talk about the um the locations because they are so important you've got these two i guess estates or mansions or something um and they take on a sort of life of their own. They almost become like a character. And so, you know, the destruction of um, Argy's home, it almost feels like a, a character is just, you know, being killed or murdered or something. Talk, talk to me about how, how you found those locations. Um, I mean, I feel that um, uh, Glenn, I mean, you know, a Funny Boy was truly a collaborative piece whether it was the amazing performances from Appa to Amma to all of them, to amazing cinematography by Dakko, who captured mm. uh, a Sri Lanka that perhaps the people don't know, you know. And uh, and I was greatly influenced by the film The Garden of the Finzi Contini, which was also about an upper middle class, uh, it, you know, Jewish Italian family thinking that their wealth could protect them from what was happening with the Holocaust. Stop. And so to choose locations that showed where these people were uh, and where they came from became very important and amazing production designer. And also I think uh, uh, what happened was that because I've, we shot in Sri Lanka, we shot water in Sri Lanka, in mm -hmm. fact, and we also shot Midnight's Children in Sri Lanka. Mm because Midnight's Children is a banned book in India. We couldn't shoot it in India. And water had been thrown out of India, so we had to shoot it in Sri Lanka. Uh, I'd, I'd been exposed to a lot of wonderful locations. So, uh, But then to shoot a Sri Lankan film in Sri Lanka was like, it was God's gift. It was wonderful. So we could tap into, into our past and into amazing production designers. The local people were just fabulous, the art director. Uh, the locations person and but doug i mean doug i think the film belongs to doug how oh, beautiful gorgeous it. those colors yeah um i'd like to talk about the film's queer content um but i guess we can we can tell people that funny boy like there's news about it it's opening it's the opening film of the abamani queer film festival that's right in sri lanka which was yeah. amazing when i got that uh note a few days ago saying that we would love you. It's the only queer film festival in Sri Lanka. And wow. Rosanna, uh, you know, who is, uh, who heads the festival just is such a supporter of uh, 
queer LGBTQ films as well as Tamil queer films. I mean, she's wow. amazing. And uh, so she just embraced it and said, we want it. And so I said, go for it. And it's just wonderful. Well, talk to me about just the contradictions because, you know, uh, same-sex sexual relations are a criminal offense. Uh, there's a sodomy law. And yet funny boy is taught in schools in Sri Lanka. How, how can these two things be true at the same time? What? Well, welcome. I, I have no clue. I mean, but I have, I've seen it. I, see, I saw it with Fire in India. You mm -hmm. know, uh, it's a film that when Fire was made, it was, again, to be a lesbian was a criminal, or homosexuality laws were criminal in India. And then when it came out, I had this great moment with Fire when, uh, when it was actually released in movie theaters and on the second day there was a huge uh, uh, revolt about it saying and people trashed movie halls and said that this is against Indian culture and it was horrible and then then there was a uh, which is what I loved about what happened in India was that uh, a lot of uh, it was packed with women one evening outside the movie hall there was, it was like a vigil and uh, they carried candles and they and all the placards said, uh, we are lesbians and we are Indians. So, I mean, something happened that was a real shift. So I think at the same way, the film has really been, we had underground screenings before we had screenings here in mm. Sri Lanka, Funny Boy, for activists, for queer people, for uh, Tamils, for Sri Lankans. And uh, it was uh, it was fascinating how, how much they embraced the opportunity that finally a message of what had happened to the Tamils, how much they had mm -hmm. suffered, had uh, was out there for the world. Wow, that's really inspiring. Um, I'd like to talk about the representation because apparently you were intent on hiring uh, an openly gay actor to play the older Arji. Why, why was that important to you? It, it was important to me because, uh, because of the laws in, in Sri Lanka and uh, uh, that that it wasn't about race it was about mm. about self-determination again and it it's it wasn't about Sinhalese or Tamil it was about the fact that we we can as as human beings uh, be who we want to be and uh, it was very important for Sham and it was important for me. I mean, you know, we looked at many actors, and looked many Tamil actors, many Tamil queer actors, yeah. many Tamil actors who were who were not queer, and many Sinhalese actors. And then, then when we met Brandon, who is from Sri Lanka, was born and bred, wow. there, and he is amazing. This is his first film, and uh, he okay. was mind blowing. And he was, you know, the point is, it's not easy to take a risk. It's another thing that the book is taught in colleges mm. and universities but the film is so has so much access to the world that people were people in Sri Lanka especially Tamils were slightly apprehensive of being a part of a gay film because they're persecuted to this date in Sri Lanka well can you talk further about that because I know you did want to cast more Tamil actors um, there was a, a bit of a controversy around the accents the Tamil accents in the film um, mm -hmm. What was that process like trying to find people with with this situation with the social situation and the stigma? It it was not uh, uh, you know I, I mean, it's ironic. I mean, you know you want to find I like the idea of having authentic actors. Uh, I've done it in all my films. I mean, but right. for example, in water, I couldn't find an Indian girl to play the little uh, little lead, the young girl. Mm -hmm who carries the film water and finally I had to find some a Sinhalese girl from Sri Lanka. So little Chuya, who's a Hindu from India, uh, actually was played by a Sri Lankan. I mean, so you ha you want to be as true and possible, but you get to a point where either you don't make a film because you don't find the right actor to play it. There's a, you know, there's a fine line between representation and tokenism. and. Uh, you know, just just to uh, to make it uh, to get a Tamil actors when I tried desperately to get them, uh, and and then to make a compromise with the, their ability to embody those characters didn't seem 
compare to whatever Sham was doing, which is about building bridges. I mean, and I didn't want to go into tokenism. I really didn't. I mean, you try as much as you can, and and it's 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 sad for me. This controversy um, is not unlike fire or water, which is but luck, you know. But each their own. I mean, representation is extremely important. There's no question about it. You, know, you talked art, about, but not at the cost of art. There's a wonderful yeah. quote which I love uh, from Bertolt Brecht, where he says that uh, art is not what mirrors reality, but it's a hammer that shapes it. So where mm -hmm. where do we, what do we do? You know, what are we going to do? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think everything is up for grabs now. Um, you mentioned the reaction to fire. There were riots. Um, what was the filming like of Funny Boy in in Sri Lanka? Was you know did you you know getting permits, getting government approval, or you know to film? Was that uh, was that a smooth ride or? Oh, are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> a smooth ride. You should ask David Hamilton, the producer. <laughs> oh my God, and, and the and the Sri Lankan producers. It was hell. It took us one year to get permissions. And this is a book that's a beloved book. Mm -hmm. and, uh, even then, and if it wasn't for the prime minister then, who was Daniel Wickersinghe, we would have never gotten permission. But we we were there for three times for one year, sitting outside, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the information broadcasting uh, ministry and trying to get from the National Film Commission permissions and Basically, they really, they, they, they were, it wasn't uh, the queer content as much as the way uh, the Tamils were being portrayed as victims. They didn't mm. like that. So. Wow. Did you shoot any of, um, any of that stuff that you had to go through? I mean, that would be a good extra for, you know, a, a DVD or a Blu-ray as a documentary. Oh, I wish you were there and you thought about it. <laughs> Those days, I mean, if we could get, if I could get through a day, Glenn, of of not wanting to tear my hair out, and and many times, you know, the producers would say, "This is this is really forget it, for, don't do this film." It's it's, I, but you know, I just felt I was fighting for something that was very important. You know, voices that don't get heard should get heard. You know. Whatever their accent is becomes irrelevant, doesn't it? Um, I'd like to shift uh, to something different, but it's something that um, filmmakers must be thinking about uh, in this day and age. It's uh, streaming versus theatrical releases. Um, the film came out here on CBC Gem. Uh, Ava DuVernay's Array Releasing bought the film, released it on Netflix around the world. I guess you can't argue with um, just the reach that uh, a streaming platform like, ne like Netflix or CBC Gem has. But what are your thoughts, um, you know, as a filmmaker on streaming okay. versus theatrical? Well, I'm going to sound my age, which is fine. I mean, I love movie halls. I love, I love the fact that I love, I mean, uh, I love going to a cineplex, you know, and, and buying the popcorn. And then you make a commitment. You make a yes. there. And fuzzy peach, I love to. It, it's just those little yeah. things that, I mean, it's terrible. Uh, but you, which are associated with cinema, which you sit there quietly and, the, and then you see a few mm -hmm. ads and and then it starts and the magic begins. I mean, I, 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 just, I just find that beautiful. But I also think that... Uh, having done stuff for streaming services, that it's a wonderful, if there was a combination of both, I'd be ecstatic. Mm -hmm. You know, what? it's sort of weird that I would complain about it when Martin Scorosi has embraced it for the Irishman, you know. This is what you have to do, that's the reality. But if, it, if somebody could see a movie in a movie hall, Funny Boy in a movie hall, as well as see it on Netflix, why not? You know, mm -hmm. or um, we've got some questions coming in in the Q&A function here, and I'm going to read one out. Uh, it's from Talia Faubert, who asks, how is directing an adapted screenplay different than an original? And what challenges come with directing an already successful novel? Oh, it's a very good question. I mean, I think that, uh, you know, I've written my own screenplays. I've also, I've also, this is not my first adaptation. I mean, I, uh, Right. I worked with Salman Rushdie on Midnight Children. Mm -hmm. 
and I worked with Baxi Sidwa on her wonderful Ice Candy Man, which became Earth. So this is my yeah. third graphic novel. But I, I think it's the relationship that you have with the, with the writer. And, and if the writer feels, which I did feel in all three cases, that I really respected what they had done, uh, we, it became a collaboration. And once it becomes a collaboration, I felt that they really added to, added to the screenplay because they were the originators of this vision and 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 because we got along and I didn't and I respected them and uh, I guess they respected me that uh, we actually we you know I, I loved what they did and they loved what I did and uh, that that's where it starts is re actually respecting the written word. Um, I'd like to, I mean, we are in month 14 of a pandemic. Um, can we talk a bit about, uh, you know, making movies during pandemics? I mean, obviously this film, you could, it wouldn't have been possible with those crowd scenes and stuff, uh, all the extras. Uh, it was, uh, uh, we'd actually finished shooting before, uh, before COVID hit the world. Mm -hmm. uh, but and but we were editing uh, in Sri Lanka. I mean, we were editing in Madrid. Sorry, uh, wow. editor is this wonderful uh, editor called Teresa Font, who I just love. Who who is actually uh, cut uh, Almodovar's film Pain and Glory, and I saw Pain and Glory, and I said, I want this woman to cut Funny mm. Bone. That's right. <laughs> I mean, I just I'm such an admirer of her. So we finished editing it. And the day we finished editing, it was the last flight that we got from Madrid to Toronto. Wow. And after that, all hell broke loose. So post-production was a nightmare. Uh, you know, you spoke earlier about the Tamil. I mean, we knew that the Tamil was was really dodgy for, some, for three of the actors uh, specifically. Mm -hmm. And we, were, we had booked a, a, you know, a studio in Sri Lanka, in Colombo, to actually go there and get and dub it because mm -hmm. that's what I mean. I've done many, many films before. That's what, and that became out of the question. So uh, wow. it was really difficult. And we had actors who were, we did it on cell phones. I mean, we couldn't, it was in, they would hide in their closets to be quiet. And the amazing sound team here, Sim, uh, mm -hmm. would uh, would get it in, in on their studios. It, it was a very, very long and a very tedious process. The post production was, yeah. wow. but uh, you know, finally we did get it. I mean, uh, you know, by that time, uh, I think there was, a, I had screened the film, telling uh, telling a person. In fact, your compatriot from now, when he'd come for the screening, I I said, you know, I'm so happy you've come, and uh, but please be aware that the Tamil is very dodgy. Mm. And uh, and we will fix it when mm. as soon as the studios open. But unluckily, he didn't care too much, and uh, and all hell broke loose. And so people actually made decisions about the controversy about the language without having seen the film. Mm. Um, there's another question from a Heather Seaman. Um, care to share any projects you're working on now? I was going to get to that too. And has the pandemic inspired any future projects? That's a, a good question. Um, no, the pandemic hasn't. Oh yeah, in fact, it has. Uh, so oh. thank you. Uh, uh, because I, I feel very strongly now that uh, the two projects that I'm, I'm considering really carefully and both of them are fabulous and uh, one is a horror film, so I think that's a direct, <laughs> direct <laughs> result of the pandemic where I said, yeah. okay, I, I really, this I could get into, psychological horror. And the other is uh, is an all-out comedy. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that is also another result of, it's a period comedy. Like, what are they called, Glenn? You're the, you're the, you're the, you're the person who would know. Uh, remember uh, that wonderful film uh, with Heath Ledger? Um, about uh, Night's Tale. Do you oh, remember? Night's Tale, Night's yeah. Tale, yeah. So, you know, that kind of, that energy yeah. of, uh, in, you know, India after the mutiny in 1893 uh, wow. is, I mean, it's so funny and it's so smart. Beautifully written. Yeah. And do you have a feeling that people want that sort of escapism after, you know, the horror that, that we have been living through over the past year? You know, um, I don't even think what people want. I really don't, because then I'll yeah. really get stuck. That's what I want. 
I mean, mm. uh, after, a, you know, during the pandemic, I, I really want to go into the depths of despair with a horror film or the unknown. And I want to go r be right out there and crazy with uh, something yeah. like, uh, uh, you know, this hysteria. Yeah. Wow. Um, I'd like to talk about the, the music in the film, Howard Shore's score. I mean, it's such a fascinating blend of, of cultures and... And I noticed too these sort of little references. Um, there's one, uh, I think, to the King and I. I think that's the um, mm -hmm. the musical that they're rehearsing. And then yeah. there's a Doctor Zhivago reference, which I, yeah, which you yeah. know, I guess is that again a sort of a, a romance set against um, you know world changing events. Um, you know, was that all intentional? Did that come from Howard? Was it in discussion with you? No, uh, uh, Howard did. All, I mean, he knew what I wanted to do, which was right. that when, before you start filming, you have to get rights to the certain songs that will be, right. you know, so we had to do it much before. But he right. knew exactly what I wanted. I mean, I knew I wanted uh, stings every breath you take uh, for, for, you know, for that lovely, that magical scene between totally. yeah. Brandon yeah. and Shehan who play RG and, uh, uh, and, uh, and also King and I and, uh, that was what they were rehearsing in fact so it was easy to do right. that but the idea of these of the pop references whether it was was to capture a time a time of the 70s and what happens to upper middle class and what they listen to which is all the references that you know that everybody else in the world is listening to so it captures a time and howard knew about that and he what what howard's music did which is brilliant is actually weave the timeline for RG and what happens to the Tamils, the explosion. Mm -hmm. And it starts off with very, very gently and it's peppered with all these pop references and then it explodes. But he does that so subtly. I mean, it was, I, I feel really blessed having worked with Howard, Teresa Fong, Doug Cole. I mean, these are amazing, amazing people and all the actors to swoon over Glenn totally. <laughs> Um, you mentioned those two films that you're working on. Are they what? What kind of stage are they? Are they in now? Uh, well, both of them are financed. So I mean, it's just wow. a question of when, where, when to shoot them, and where. Where is the big question? Because they're both feature films, and uh, you know, they aren't. Uh, so um, and are you optimistic we're going to get out of this? Um, you know, with the industry intact. I, I think what the pandemic has proven is that there is such a desire to see works of fiction or, or documentaries. Mm. I mean, we need art much more than we ever did. And this cinematic art is, uh, is I think it's, it can be a balm. It can, or it can help you pass the time or forget how difficult it is. So we've learned the importance, if anything else, of cinema during this time. Thank you. Absolutely. And, and thank you again for this wonderful film. I just rewatched it on the weekend and uh, it was just gorgeous. So, so moving and, and heartfelt. And uh, I, as I said, I can't wait to see it on, on, on a big screen properly with the popcorn and, and the candy. So. <laughs> uh, Glenn, we have a date. Okay. okay. You we'll and me. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs>